Hi, welcome to the channel and today I'm going to be showing you how to create an employee performance review checklist. But this really can be any checklist that you want to create. So I'm going to show you how first of all we will create the information. So if we just go over to ChatGPT and on your home page, if you just go down to the bottom here and I'm going to insert the words employee performance review checklist. But again, you can put anything in here from a cleaning checklist to a travel checklist. It's completely up to you. And then just press enter. And now you can see that ChatGPT has completed a full checklist for us. So all I'm going to do now is select from the bottom, click and drag all the way to the top of that checklist. There we go. I'm just going to press Command or Control C on my keyboard. Alternatively, you can right click and press copy and then we'll just go back to Word. So in here, I'm going to insert a table. So click insert table, click on the drop down. I'm going to select three columns and then just go down to the bottom here. And then we're just going to move these two over. So click and drag this line over. That's where we're going to put our check boxes. Click and drag this box over as well. And then we're going to go down to the bottom, go up to layout, and then I'm just going to hit this button until I've got as many rows as I can on this particular page. Then I'm going to click and select just this column. I'm going to go to the home tab and over to paste, but I am going to click on the drop down and there's various types of pasting that you can do. So in order that this fits perfectly with our table, I'm going to select match formatting. And as you can see, it's kept all of the bold and the titles and kept the remainder of it to a text which isn't bold. It hasn't kept the numbers, but I'm fine with that. If you want to place the numbers in, that's completely up to you. You would have to make an extra column on the side here and place your numbers in. So you'd end up with four columns and the remaining rows. Now for me, I think that the row height is too shallow and I like a bit more space. So I'm going to select the entire table by selecting this top left square, go to layout and where it says height, I'm just going to select it, press one and press enter. Then so that all my information is aligned to the left, but in the middle of my row, I'm going to go over and select center align, sorry, left center, and then deselect. And aesthetically, that looks great. So I'm then going to put my cursor in front of my first word and press the return key, which allows my cursor to go above the table and allows me to push the table down a little bit, allowing more room for my title. Now, if you want this to be a printable form, then you can simply check these boxes. If you want this to be a digital form, then I will show you how to do that. So select this top left cell, doesn't matter, you can select the top right one, and you need to go to the developer tab. If you can't see the developer tab, go up to Word, go to preferences, go to ribbon and toolbar, then on here, scroll down to the bottom and make sure developer is checked there and click save. So over to your developer tab and you'll see there's a box here that says checkbox click on that. And then if you want the shading, you can keep it. If not, take off the shading, select this box, copy the box, command or control C, select all the remaining boxes, press command or control V and for this one as well. And then we can select all of the boxes, just click and drag across both of those columns, go to layout, and go over to center align. And now they're all aligned to the center. The way this works is you have to go back to the developer tab. You have to protect your form with this icon here. This will allow you now to make a digital cross in each of these boxes. Sometimes you have to double click. And then again, to take them off, double click or just click inside. Now we haven't put a title above this row here. so we have to go back and unprotect the form because once you protect it, you can't make any adjustments to this form at all. So you have to go back and unprotect it. And you can see all of these now are not grayed out. Select this cell here, 
go to layout, go to insert above, and then here I'll put in the word yes and in here no. You can see we've gone onto a third page here. And again, if you don't want that to happen where you've just got one line, then we can adjust our margin. So over on the left, we've got a ruler. If you can't see rulers, go to view, make sure rulers are checked. Come down to the bottom, hover between the gray and white section. You'll see your cursor change. Click and just drag down to give us a little bit more space on the page. And you can do the same to the top one as well if you want to, just to give a little bit of extra space on the page. So at the bottom, I'm going to put a title in last, but at the bottom, if you want to put in some text in the headers and footers, double click at the bottom of your page, or you can go to insert, header or footer, doesn't matter. Click on the drop down and go down to edit header. And then in here, because it doesn't give you a lot of flexibility about where to put your text, I like to insert a text box. So go to insert text box, click on the drop down and select draw text box. Let's just put a form in. If I deselect this square, you can see I've got a borderline around it. So I'm going to get rid of that, select it, go to shape format, go to this icon here, which is the outlines and select no outline. And then we can move this text anywhere we like. We can move it onto the page if we want to. It will still appear in the headers and footers. All the headers and footers really mean is if you put anything into this section, it will be duplicated on every page. So I'm going to duplicate this and put some more information over here. So I'm going to select it, hold down my Alt or Option key, click and drag. And then I'm just going to put in a company name. And then once again, I can deselect it and then reselect it and move it anywhere I like. If you want them to line up perfectly, select this one as well by holding down your command or control key. Go to shape format, go to align and select align to top. And those two will be perfectly lined up. Double click back into the main document. And here at the bottom, you see your headers and footers and they'll be greyed out. If you print this out or you send it as a PDF, they will look jet black as they would do if you were just normally typing. So I'm gonna put a title in at the top here and once again, I'm going to use a text box because it just gives me a lot more flexibility. Click on the drop down, select draw text box, click and drag out your text box. Then pop in your title. I'm going to select it, go to the home tab. I'm going to use this icon here to increase the font size. I'm going to use this icon to center it and underline it. Once again, if I deselect it, you can see I've got a borderline. So select it again, go to shape format, go to outline and just select no outline. To make sure this is perfectly centered, select it, go to shape format, align, align to center. Again, if you're not happy with the placement of anything, you can simply just select it, use the arrow keys to move it up or down. And again, you can do the same with the table. If you don't like the way the table looks because it's at the top of the page and you want it lined up with this one, then you're going to need to split the table. Select the top of it here, go to layout, go to split table. You see your cursor is at the top here. Then you can literally just hit the return key and then you can line it up here. What that does mean though is you may get an extra page. Once again, you can adjust the margin slightly there we go. Once again, if you want this to be a digital form, don't forget to go back to the developer tab and protect your form so that you can then select these boxes. I've just noticed at the top here, this appears not to have been underlined, but if I click on it and pull it down, you can see there that there is an underline, but we've got that white background again that's interfering with the table. So once you've selected it, again, go to shape format, go to shape fill, click on the drop down, select no fill and then you can see it's all perfectly lined up with the underline there. You will notice that some of the boxes look like they're not complete, but if I zoom in and out, you can see they will rectify themselves and it's just a glitch on the page. They are actually complete squares. So I hope that's helped you today. If it has, please like and subscribe and have a great day.